grade, playing in the top grade, so that, that gives them a bit of an edge. Oh, look, they've got players in their side that have played in first grade grand finals, the likes of Stephen Hughes and Gavin Lester. Last week, they played outstanding football, I've got to tell you, in their match against Penrith, their grand final qualifier. It's hard to believe, Ken, the first week of the finals this year, the Bulldogs lost 52-4 to to Western Suburbs. What a wake-up call for the minor premiers that was. The next week, they came out and ran up over 60 points against Manly to get through to this game. And last week, they just blew Penrith away in the first half. They scored 24 points. Jonathan Thurston, wearing jumper number 20 last week, coming back from a fractured cheekbone. That was an enormous boost for the Bulldogs club. Very exciting halves this uh, Bulldog side have. They've got uh, Brett Oliver, Jonathan Thurston, both teenagers, and Stephen Hughes, the captain of the side, the centre. He is the veteran at 28 years of age, scored three tries last week. So it's a real blend. It is that, that classic cliche, youth and experience in this first division side. On the other side, you've got the Dragons. You've got a, a bit of a mixture. Average age of this side is around about 22. And last week against Parramatta here at Telstra Stadium, the dress rehearsal for them, they found themselves up by 10 points a couple of times during the match, but midway through the second half until this intercept by Nick Riley, uh, they found themselves suddenly looking down the barrel of defeat. Parramatta had fought back. They appeared to have the momentum. That one run changed things all over, and the Dragons would go on and score the last two tries of the match to get through to the grand final. And if we can only size up head-to-head -head between, between these two teams, they've only clashed once this year. That was down at Wynn Stadium. And the two squads that will play today were very similar to the two teams that met on that day, and the Dragons emerged winners. So, yes, the Bulldogs are favourites, but uh, as I say, as we've just seen then, minor premiers doesn't mean you're across the line. Counts for nothing. OK, well, the Dragons have had their disappointment. The Bulldogs have had their disappointments in the, the top grade, so it's, it's a tale of hardship, isn't it, already? It is, and a good battle between the coaches too. Mick Potter, former grand final winner with the Dogs, coach of the Dragons, against Kevin Moore, who's won a couple of lower-grade titles in recent years with the, with the Bulldogs. Thanks very much, Andrew. Look forward to the call. Live rugby league action kicks off after the break. The Bulldogs versus the Dragons for the first division premiership right here on wide world of sports sunshine on that eastern side of stadium australia the fans on that side certainly enjoying it and a, a great reception it was for the young roosters players from all the supporters here i think even the dragon supporters had to bow to the efforts of the young roosters outsiders in jersey flag here we have the case of the minor premiers the bulldogs phil gould fielding as i said to ken a real blend of youth and experience this side certainly and plenty of these fellas you'll recognize as having played first grade even this season the fullback is barry lester and harris and hughes are the three quarters thurston and oliver the halves mature got moran paul solichkin and brideson the front row on the bench amelia Harvey, and Wisner. they're coached by kevin moore and for the dragons a couple of late changes to the team kent is the fullback Simmons and Christensen on the wings, Nero and Cataverata in the centres, Bauer and Kerr are the halves, Ford Pack, McBride, Tut, Attenborough, Stapleton, Ellis, Ross, Riley, Felsch, Hill and Rogers on the interchange bench and coached by former great Michael Potter. Good to have Jason Taylor on board in commentary for this first division decider as the Bulldogs will come out. Very experienced captain in Stephen Hughes, 28 years of age and a grand finalist in first grade way back in 19. For Gavin Lester, their winger also has first grade grand final experience and that counts for plenty when you reach this day. There would be some young men, the halves, Oliver and Thurston, just 19 years of age that despite their enormous potential would be very nervous, you would have to believe right at this stage. Playing here at Telstra Stadium and it must be bittersweet for the Bulldogs fans watching around the country right now. You were hoping that it would be your first grade side playing today. The events not far out from finals ruin that. But here you have a chance at winning a first division title. And they come into this match on the back of two rousing performances, week two and three of the first division finals. After that, well, just one of those days where they lost 52 to four to Western Suburbs in week one. Jonathan Thurston, number six on his back. No disrespect to many players we'll see today, but he is a class above this level of football. And now the Dragons for this team, with changes in personnel to the first grade squad for next year. A number of these players looking to prove to whoever will be coaching first grade next year that they are ready to take that step to become consistent first graders. Their one meeting this year was back in round 14 at Wynn Stadium. The Dragons won 27 to 18. They are skippered by a former Eagle in Damien Bauer. And they will be relying on some of those players who have already tasted first grade to 
come through for them today. Damien Bauer's been a fine leader for them. Reese Simmons comes back today from a broken leg, hasn't played since May, makes his return grand final day. We are joined on the sideline this afternoon by former Dragons first grade captain, Origin star, Mark Coyne. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Andrew. I've been for a bit of a walk around the field, and despite the hot weather today, it's actually quite cool down here on ground level at 22 degrees, and there's actually quite a nice light breeze to keep the players cool. I suppose, as you said, today's First Division Grand Final gives the opportunity for the Bulldogs fans to get a bit of joy out of the year, but I'll stick true, mate, and tip the Dragons. The Dragons players rallying together. They would be disappointed for their comrades who lost the jersey flag decider, Tony Archer, referee. And Bulldogs will run from right to left for this first half as we draw a little closer to the first grade decider between the Roosters and the Warriors. We get underway with a trainer ducking for cover from the Dragons. So St George Illawarra, the defending champions in first division. They defeated Parramatta on this day last year. And some big defence, some pile driving defence from the Bulldogs. First tackle of the match was Brideson and Hall leading the charge and now Stapleton for the Dragons. Front row with plenty of first grade experience. Taken low by Brideson. Ellis's dummy half. And offloading there for Attenborough. And outside their 20 metre zone. Ellis is one of those Tinga connection that have tasted first grade football. Former Rooster. Another hit up there for Stapleton. He is the forward leader in this Dragons pack. And first kick of the day from Kieran Kerr. It is good. And it has Nathan Barry on the run back. I have the in-goal judges in the first division. That was the official you saw trying to clear the path of the ball there. No video referee. Yeah, referee Tony Archer there just trying to stamp a little authority on the game, try to speed the play. The ball's up and no surprise that we have a couple of clubs like the Dragons and the Bulldogs here in the first division grand final. Both clubs synonymous at this time of year with finals football and that filters down into the culture of your lower grades. Two very good football teams here. This will be an entertaining game. Brideson working right with Dennis Scott. First grade debut way back in 96 with the Broncos. Plenty of experience there. 30 metres away from the Dragons line. Best field position of the match and here is Thurston with that step. His first touch he gets past two. Snare to try and kick seven goals last week. 20 away from the Dragons line and they are set to the left with young Oliver. Passing for the lock forward Matua. Matua had that left arm almost free there to offload. So the Dragons defence, little examination for them here. Scott with a run to the line. And 15 away. On tackle Dragons number five. Come on, Peter. The playmakers are the seven and six. Yeah, and Thurston is calling for it. And he has it. His kick from 12 out. A little bounce to that in goal. There's a charge of blue and white jumpers. And Ben Harris is going to claim that he was okay, first there. Happy with the onside. In goal judge Sorry. agrees. Thank you. Tony Archer agrees and we have the first four pointer. Ben Harris has it. It is 4-0 to the Bulldogs. Good work here for the Bulldogs. Finals are won on simple football and fifth tackle pressure. As we freeze it there, this is Jonathan Thurston. He's the kicker. We can see that the, all these players out here to the right are onside. He'll get the ball in behind the line. They'll chase through, and the referees are happy. They ground the ball OK as play continues. Thurston with a neat grubber kick that bounces high. That's where the problem is, and Harris got his hand on the football. Well, it was a close one to call. We'll see it better from head on, JT. Yeah, both teams have started very well, very composed, and it was just a good controlled set from the Bulldogs. Thurston runs it in, and it's clearly no try, but it's on the board. Yeah, well, there you look at it. He's, well, he hasn't even come close. As Andrew Voss said, we have in-goal touch judges here. We don't have video replay. If we did, I doubt there'd be a video referee in our competition that could have allowed that one. Ben Harris there, season tries here in First Division 7, has played a fair bit of first grade. He'll be counting his blessings that he's got the Bulldogs on the, on the board early with a try. And the Dragons would have been looking up at the big screen there saying, well, there's not much we can do about it, but we owe them one. Thurston will attempt the conversion from 11 metres in from touch. No man could have been closer to the put down. Then the in-goal judge, he was only a couple of metres away. Thurston successful. Grand final day on the wide world of sports. It is 6-0 in First Division to the Bulldogs.
It's like corners were made for it. Bulldogs make the start to First Division, the grand final as they would have hoped, but in very controversial circumstances, now they get a penalty. You would hope that that try would fire the Dragons right up. It is a setback when you've got these giant screens here at Telstra Stadium, highlighting an obvious mistake by the officials. Well, I guess in that sense, Fossey, it's the best advertisement that we could have for the fact that we have video referees in our NRL competition nowadays. And Moran in the headgear in the back row for the Bulldogs. He was player's player last week against the Panthers. Another one of the headgear gang is Matua, who got the inside ball there for Hughes and then able to offload back for Moran. In the back of that performance last week, he did score two tries. Dragons have an injured troop at the moment. Their captain, Damien Bauer, is down in back play, and the Bulldogs had created an opportunity on that right-hand side. Dragons survive with Catavarata. Probably a just let off for the Dragons there. We know they shouldn't be behind on the scoreboard, but it was looking very similar the way the Bulldogs played that set, rolling one in on the end of it again, but Dragons come away, settle back into the game. Ben Ross hits this ball up. He's off to the Panthers next year. The number 18 for the Dragons. Ellis drops and then passes for Tut. And they're back within five metres of halfway. Dragons, Ellis, back in field. Attenborough able to carry over halfway. But again, there's three in the tackle for the Bulldogs. They went through the first 13 rounds of the first division competition, only losing one game this year. Low kick there from Kerr. Some of the chases offside. Barry slides into them. That is just outside the 20. And now Lester back in field with Harris. We saw him in first grade this year. He played four matches. And now Howland, man without a club for next year. Moving on the bench for the Bulldogs. It's not that positive. Matua, it was limping to the bench. So an early change for the Bulldogs, the minor premiers, Oliver. They work left and they work straight through and then a player was tackled without the ball. I think it was Barry, the fullback. Dragons come up with possession. Might have had a slice of luck of their own there. Mattenborough playing it outside the 40. This is the winger, Christensen. He is also their goal kicker. Hoping for a lot of work this afternoon. Kerr with it. Dragons looking alive now in their best position in the match so far. And a penalty that will help. 25 metres out. He's a good player, Kieran Kerr. There was a time where the Dragons thought he was the answer to their first grade halfback problems. He got a serious injury, which kept him out of the game for a while. But he does like to take the line on. He's got plenty of speed. He put some pressure on the Bulldogs there. And in trying to slow the play down, they've incurred a penalty. Came from the Sharks. Got good awareness, good speed. He's able to put the defence in two minds, and the Dragons have opted for a kick at goal, despite being six behind on the scoreboard. Well, Gus, by my count, he's one of five players that they will have as contenders for the number seven jumper in first grade next year with the exit of Willie Peters. Kieran Kerr's there. They've signed a young bloke, Brett Furman, from the Sharks. They've still got Dean Byrne, who was the Bulldogs' jersey flag halfback this time last year. A young bloke in the Jersey flag side this year, Matthew Head, and another bloke we might see off the bench today, Lach Lachlan Russell. But you're talking very inexperienced, so great opportunity for whoever wants to put their hand up. Yes, yeah, certainly. The halves who played in the Jersey flag game today were, were outstanding. They were usually the best players in that particular grade. and um, You can see, too, for those that don't see a lot of first division football, that these two teams will resemble greatly their first grade counterparts, their NRL counterparts. The Bulldogs look like their senior team. The Dragons look like their senior team. And you've got a mixture here of older players who have experienced a bit of the top grade and younger players that are still hopeful of getting there. 26 out and 20 in from touch. Christensen, a bit of a stab with his first kick. And it's only just going to go dead. They'll have the 20-metre the dropout. Mark Coyne's sideline at 6-0 to the Bulldogs. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. One thing Mick Potter would be concerned about, he was very worried coming into that game, was actually a lot the offloads from the uh, Bulldogs forwards. And they're getting plenty away at the moment. They need to address that. Thurston with a low restart and it will be Stapleton's job to bring back over the 40 metre line he actually won the award for the Dragons first division player of the year and he's signed up for next year Tim Vicks the note there too Vossi grand final today we've got uh, three games on 
Of the three games played, there are six teams and four of them are coached by ex-Canterbury players. Michael Potter played with the Bulldogs. Kevin Moore played with the Bulldogs. Dean Pay played with the Bulldogs. Scramble here, Gus, with that kick over the top. It was knocked on at the finish. No try for Nero. Hey. Canterbury number one. Wait. Although the touch judge has picked up some interference that he's not too happy about. The first man in Howland was collected high by Catavarata. And then Catavarata the kick and then the fumble by the setter. I think the touch judge has got Catavarata for a... Well, he's, he's given the penalty to the Dragons, which is a great boost for them. They've had a couple of things go against them in this game. They missed that goal kick that they probably should have got. Now they really can build some pressure on the Bulldogs team. They trail by six points to nil, but that mightn't be the case for long as Ross takes the first hit up. Only a metre away from the line. He is a big bopper, the front rower for the Dragons. Back for Kerr. This is Stapleton. And driving defence there from Ben Harris, the number three. Ellis, and again he stops before he passes. They lose a little edge in attack with that sort of play. Nathan Tutt held up nine metres away from the line. Bauer out of dummy half, the captain. Right up to the goal line and held by Oliver. Bulldogs turn to be put under the pump as the Dragons attack. They work wide, Kerr a short pass that was well read by the defence. Thurston was there with Stephen Hughes that time. Dragons five metres away, on tackle five, and the kick through. Oliver is away now, the halfback. The little legs get moving and gets over the 20 metre line. Well, things, the communication just fell apart for the Dragons for a minute there. They didn't have a dummy half. One of the players raced across, picked the ball up and put the grub in. It looked a good one until the Bulldogs swooped on it. Now it's a Dragons ball again. Some scrappy play from the Dogs as they worked up towards halfway. Simmons gets a run now. Another chance for the Dragons, 32 away. Stapleton is working very hard early, leading the hit-up count. His side trail by six. And here is Attenborough. Wollongong Jr. in the back row with the Dragons. Hasn't tasted first grade. Ellis switches them left. Kerr inside again for Stapleton. And this time contained by Glenn Hall. The two front rowers head on. Ellis, short pass, fighting Ross. Having a dash himself. Just a metre away again at his tackle five for the Dragons. It was a slow play, the ball, and then a terrible pass back. And that is abysmal from the Dragons on the last tackle. I think you'd have to say at the moment their dummy half passing leaves a lot to be desired. A little slow, a little predictable. And there when you're looking for a, a fifth tackle option to try and get a restart or put some pressure on the opposition, your main kick has got to reach for the ball way out in front. Comes up with a knock on and relieves the pressure easily for the Bulldogs. the change over the Bulldogs come up with the ball just inside their 20 and Moran is the man tackle local junior in this Bulldog side attacking the short side quick hands from Scott he was then hit after passing he was stung by it yet to get to his feet they're on their 30 meter line Thurston with a juggle the two the, the halves Thurston and Oliver they're also the New South Wales under 19 halves earlier this year tackles early the Bulldogs that has only just changed really over the last three or four minutes the defensive workload increased we've got another touch judge in this time yeah I want to have a look at the replay on this because the touch judge reacted quickly and I did too it looked as though one of the Dragons players play the ball but he's got his hands all around the plates near the eye region making a pest of himself just get the rubbish yeah. out get the rubbish out penalty over here hey, I know, hey, okay. yeah, it, it looked a lot worse than it was on the first replay here but you'll see that the dragons player comes in over the top he's actually got his hands around his eyes you know that looked a lot worse than it was I, I i won't say that he was gouging and the linesman's giving him the benefit of the doubt as well the touch judge worded it well a bit of rubbish in the tackle and it was dealt with so the Bulldogs with it, 35 away from the Dragons line. They have one try on the board, one try that the replay suggested shouldn't have been awarded. But we live with that, Thurston, and a good ball for Barry. And it is zero tackle, it was played at the call from Archer. Well, it was six more tackles, but it was a great opportunity. If the if this Dragons player didn't knock that ball down, I think the Dogs are a big chance of going in again in that far corner. Thurston a dummy half. Oliver there, first receiver. And his second rower, Scott. 
who has put it down. He was looking to create the gap, and the gap was there, and Scott knows it. And not happy about it, by the sounds of things. A good little short ball there from Oliver. Scott almost into space. Just got it on the back of the hip and put the ball down. Now, there's a player like Dennis Scott in first grade, probably not renowned for running hard on the edges of the ruck into short passes, and even a little earlier, he put a nice little raid down the short side with some quick hands. In first grade, renowned Moore is just a man who comes on and hits it up, but that's the speed of the two grades. In first division, some players more comfortable with different roles than they are in the top grade. Catavarada, who had some big first grade experience late in the year, played in their two finals matches for the Dragons. And they're back to the 40. And they are warming to the battle. Stapleton. It's only been some untidy play inside the Bulldogs 20 that has brought them undone, really. Ellis, that's better the service there for Bowers' kick. But the kick wasn't so, so good with Barry coming back. Able to catch it on the full. And as a result, get back to the 30. This time, Harris. Probably want to address their last play options a little bit, the Dragons. We saw them make that mistake on the last play earlier where they really could have built some pressure. And again, they're kicking the ball straight to the fullback. I want to get it away from him, make him have a little bit of, of, a, of harder work to do to get across and get that ball to bring it back. Interesting set of six. We've seen the two wingers take the last two hit-ups. Forwards getting a real rest as Oliver passes for Thurston. Keeps it alive. This is beautiful play from the Dogs. 20 metres away, Barry will play it after he does a headstand. Now Brideson left with Thurston. The deft kick didn't get a clear passage through and covered up by Kent. Dragons back with the ball and will work it off their own goal line. It's just a difference between the two sides at the moment. When there are half chances, the right man is getting the football for the Bulldogs. And as we've seen with the Dragons in attacking zone, sometimes the ball's going the wrong way. Well, there's a poor pass from the dummy half. Very well drilled this Bulldog side. Thurston's getting the ball in good position. Keep coming in the middle. Prop, keep coming now here. Bauer for Stapleton. And what a crash up into the two front rowers, Solid Jenkin and Hall. Dogs already making two interchanges, one forced with the injury to Matua. They brought out an exciting young centre now, Emilio. You'll see soon, number 14. Got a bit of a Willie Mason hairdo happening. He's off to the Sharks next year. Flick pass out the back there by Hughes. And then on the bounce, half volley for Thurston. Then a hop, skip and a jump across field. He's got them all guessing, including his teammates. Harvey with it. And rounded up 35 metres away from the Dragons line. Quite a battle we have. This first division decider. There's Glenn Hall. Works it to within 20 metres of the line now. Brideson. Pass out for Thurston. Again, the playmaker, the step and away from a couple. Tackle 12 metres away from the line on the last tackle, the Bulldogs. The minor premiers in first division. The high kick comes from Oliver. Kicking for the wing of Howland. It has taken over the sideline. And it is off the Dragons. It will be a scrum feed for the Bulldogs. Well, this is exactly what we've been talking about. The Bulldogs at the moment are just doing it better. They're building the pressure on these last plays. He was compelled to go for the ball there. Pushes it into touch, and the Bulldogs will get another set of six. Playing out their sets, smart plays on the end, putting the pressure on the Dragons team. Take him out the Ladies and gentlemen, we have the result of the 2002 Daily Well, there's hardly a player in their entire squad who hasn't tasted a grand final in whatever grade over the last few years. They have been the Jersey Fleck minor, or the Premiers, for the last three years. They won the first division title two years ago. They've got players with first grade grand final experience. They know what this is about. Perhaps they've settled down quicker into this match as Oliver. A dart from the scrum base and upended there by Simmons. Only five away. Full set of six to work with. Thurston, they rushed up. And he has trapped a dummy half, still five away from the line. Dragons trailing by six points to nil. And Hall will take the hit up. And now he's only two away. A pile up of defenders. They come left with Oliver. A dummy to Barry. The defence rushing off the line and put down by Sola Jenkin. And that is pressure from the Dragons' defence that was applied that forced the mistake. Hey, just come over here for a sec. Stay over. We're going to have the scrum, but... No. Well, yeah, well, this is the charge of Hall at the line. And then it's his front row partner, Sola Jenkin. 
who doesn't get a grasp on that one. And what followed was a little flare up of the tempers. Good pass from Solajinkin, only four metres forward after he had knocked on. It's a grand Let's final, though. You expect that sort of aggression. Let's get in. Let's get in. Morgan's relieved to have the ball with Attenborough. 5-2, the error count. And the Dragons would be happy to get through this set. They're working their interchange now for the first time in the match. Luke Felsch has joined the, the on-field troops. Expected to be his last game. Stapled into the bench, so too Ross. Change of the front rowers, and Luke Felsch is the man with the ball. Member of the 96 grand final side in first grade. Oldest player at the club. And this time, they hit up with Donnelly. The other replacement front rower. Loose ball out the back. And up on Ellis to make the tackle. A real wrestle going on. Eventually he is down. Stay out. And Dragons keep it going. And again, some sloppy work. And they put plenty of pressure on themselves. And the kick is a beauty, really, under the circumstances. Barry is able to cover it up 20 metres out and run back in field and run straight at Bauer. Yeah, it's just not fluent for the Dragons at the moment. Again, those problems out of dummy half. PJ Ellis, who's actually playing at number nine and dummy half for the Dragons, a former rooster, has always been a back rower. I guess more because of his size, he's decided to move into that position to extend his career. Just doesn't seem settled there at the moment, and their fifth tackle options are going awry. Oliver away for Thurston. Again, they came up quickly. It was Nero who dashed through the number three for the Dragons. The Bulldogs work it forward with Solid Jinkin. Another man without a club next year. Last tackle with the Bulldogs. Just getting a little breezy now here at the stadium. And this time it is the Bulldogs who falter out of dummy half. And a knock on on the last tackle. The Dragons will come up with the ball via the changeover in great field position. In first division football, around about the halfway mark of each half, that's when a little bit of fatigue and lack of concentration starts to set in. And both sides guilty of errors in the last five minutes. The team that can get over this little hump and get a bit of momentum happening up towards half time could well take the advantage up to the break. Curse pass, look forward there. As they get over the advantage line with a lock forward, McBride, only 15 away from the Bulldogs line. 6-0 they trail, but this one of their best chances. But again, a ball doesn't go to hand. Bauer goes back for it. And then Simmons from broken play, almost through. 12 away. Attenborough's the man at dummy half. Kerr has got it. And rushes up at the line, the little number seven. In front of the Bulldogs posts. Attenborough, again dummy half. Back for Bauer. It was a high pass. They rushed up on him. And looking to take full advantage. Last tackle. Simmons this time acting half. His kick to the end goal. Fielded there by Leicester. And Leicester does well to get almost back to the field of play. But the weight of three big meaty forwards pushing back to the end goal. Well, they started this mini resurgence with some great effort in defence in their last set of six. The Dragons, they forced the error from the Bulldogs. And then this time finished off what was a good set of six with the ball. With some good chase on that kick. And some strong, strong defence to get another set of six and just still start to build that pressure that really does come to life in grand finals. 6-0 scoreline. The minor premiers, the Bulldogs against the second place Dragons. And the Dragons with it 30 metres away from the line. McBride, an abrupt hold, almost lost the ball there as he looked for a quick play, the ball in the hall tackle. Working the blind side. Again, they get in the attacking zone and they've got a penalty for inside the 10 as they attack that short side. They had a kick from wide out earlier. I don't think from 10 in from touch they're going to entertain that thought. Yeah, and it should drop a penny with the uh, Dragons. Quick play the balls at the go here. The Bulldogs like this quick moving up and in defence. Quick play the balls can, can help get over that. Contact on the Hughes tackle on Donnelly. Felsch is held up. 10 away from the line. And now it is Bauer. He has a runner inside. That is Kent. 